one of the things that that we've kind of talked about in some of our other sessions is you don't need to be a SME for the content that you're creating. You didn't work in the military. No, no, I have never worked in the military. A lot of what we do is very technical. I do read manuals. I read doctrine. I pull out content uh, most of the time. Even when writing new lessons, I, I know what the objectives are or I help construct the objectives. And then I go to the content and look for some supporting content. Sometimes we're provided with, you know, these are the chapters that are relevant. But I've also had, here are the four manuals that are 800 to 1,000 pages. This is what we want to cover in terms of objectives and maybe some key points, topics put it together and and we only want the lesson to be an hour you know and then subject matter experts would review it after the fact on my current project we have internal subject matter experts we have retired army guys who are a part of the type of work that we're doing the type of course and so they are helping us pull the content that's relevant before the schoolhouse sees it and so that way there's a lot of content. They're helping us kind of strike out what the guys would already know, what's too high level. It can vary. What do you mean when you say schoolhouse? Because I'm pretty sure you're not talking about a college or a high school or something. So like the military branches have schoolhouses where they train all the recruits who are straight out of high school or straight out of a bachelor's program. And so these are distributed across the country different ratings or jobs might have one schoolhouse or two maybe they have an east coast and a west coast and so the, the schoolhouses are where the instructors are and so when it comes to revising a course uh, we would usually speak to instructors who currently teach it or who teach you know the related material a lot of times contractors are hired to do updates to courses although i've written brand new courses and then, like I said, sometimes we also interview fleet SMEs, which means you're trying to interact with active duty military who have limited time, limited availability, and, you know, requires sensitive, you know, discreet handling. Not too far from what I deal with on my end. Yeah. A lot of times the SMEs that I work with are developers and programmers or people that are on implementation teams or whatever, and they're very busy with their clients, client support. And they end up being, you have to like schedule time with them. It's, it's difficult. You have to respect people's hours and things like that. 